Hello boys and girls, welcome to our read aloud of Collecting and Sorting Insects by Kathy Elliott. Collecting and Sorting Insects by Kathy Elliott. So here's our table of contents. So you can see we'll be learning ab about insects, helpful insects, hopping insects, flying insects, noisy insects, and then there's also a glossary and index. All right, chapter one, about insects. Imagine weighing every creature on earth together on one huge scale. Would you be surprised to find out that insects make up most of the weight? It's true. There are far more insects on earth than any other living creature. Together, insects weigh more than all the people and other animals on the planet. And then here in this text box, it says studying bugs. Scientists who study insects are called entomologists. Identifying insects. How do you know if an animal is an insect? Insects share some important characteristics. Here's how you can tell. So first we can count the legs of this insect diagram. All adult insects have six legs. Number two, count the body parts. All adult insects have three body parts. Number three, look for wings. Most adult insects have one or two sets of wings and can fly. Are spiders insects? Some people think spiders are insects, but they aren't. Spiders have eight legs and two body parts. They cannot fly. Do you collect anything? If so, you have to decide what fits in your collection by choosing things with similar characteristics. For example, you wouldn't put a football card in a baseball card collection. Some people collect insects. They sort them into groups that are the same in some way. Sorting things into groups is called classification. The members of an after-school bug club are telling about their insect collections. Let's listen in. Chapter two. Sabrina is first. Insects aren't pets, but they're not all pests either. She says, I brought a helpful insect. Sabrina sticks her finger into a jar filled with leaves. A red and black insect crawls on. This is a ladybug. Its real name is the ladybird beetle. Sabrina shows the ladybug to the other bug club members. Ladybugs eat aphids, a pest that harms roses. Sabrina says, one ladybug can eat 70 aphids every day. That's over 5,000 aphids in its lifetime. I'd get sick of them, calls Mabel, who has something to say about everything. That's because you are not a ladybug, answers Sabrina. More of Sabrina's favorite helpful insects. Honeybee. Honeybees pollinate flowers. They also give people honey to eat 
and wax to use for candles, ink, polishes, and more. Giant Lace Wing. This large insect has lacy wings. It eats other harmful insects. The lace wing smells bad, so bug-eating birds leave it alone. Praying Mantis. The praying mantis eats many harmful insects. It holds its front legs up, so it looks like it's praying. Chapter three, hopping insects. When it is at Jacob's turn, he holds up a picture. This is a flea, he says. It's a lot smaller than it looks here. In fact, a flea is so small that it's hard to see. Jacob goes on. Fleas are good jumpers. They have special muscles that let them jump more than a foot. That's a long jump for a tiny bug. In fact, the flea is the hopping champion of the insect world. Fleas live on other animals. This makes the animals itchy. That's because fleas bite animals and eat their blood. Usually that doesn't hurt the animals, but fleas can transmit or pass on diseases. Yuck, Mabel says. More of Jacob's favorite hopping insects. The short-horned grasshopper. This insect has short antenna. When an enemy comes near, the grasshopper uses its strong back legs to jump to safety. The leafhopper. This big pest sucks sap from plants and carries diseases. It runs sideways on leaves and hops to other plants. It can fly too. American field cricket. This cr cricket cannot fly, but its hind legs are so strong that it can hop a long way. It lives in weeds and grasses near houses. That's a lot of leaf hoppers. Scientists have identified more than 20,000 different kinds of leafhoppers. They think there may, there may be more than 100,000 different kinds. Chapter four, flying insects. It is Nellie's turn. I collect flying insects, she says. Just look at this. She holds up a jar that has a colorful insect inside. This is a monarch butterfly, Nellie explains. Its wings are about four inches across. In the fall, huge groups of monarch butterflies fly south where it stays warm. Some fly more than 1,000 miles. That makes me tired, Mabel yawns. More of Nellie's favorite flying insects. 12 spotted skimmer dragonfly. This insect skims along the surface of lakes, streams, or ponds. It looks like a tiny helicopter as it hunts for food. Yellow jacket. This insect lives in a colony with a queen and workers. The female has a big stinger at the end of her body. Stay away or you might get stung. Firefly. The firefly is a kind of beetle. It is also called the lightning bug. Male fireflies flash a bright light to attract females. Chapter five. My insect is the cicada, Carlos says. It spends 17 years underground, he explains. Some years, hundreds of them crawl out in the spring. They climb into trees and shed their skin. Then they open their wings and start buzzing. 
Carlos waves his arms and makes a loud buzzing sound. Ouch, Mabel says. That hurts my ears. Sorry, says Carlos. The buzzing lasts for nearly two months, but after the females lay their eggs, the cicadas die. Then it's quiet. One month later, the eggs hatch and nymphs crawl out. They dig deep into the ground, away from enemies. They'll eat sap from tree roots for the next 17 years. Then they will come out and start buzzing. Mabel covers her ears, just in case. More of Carla's favorite noisy insects. The katydid. Katydids live in trees, tall grasses, and weeds. Most are green, but some are brown or even pink. Katydids sing loudly at night. It sounds like they're saying, Katie did did did. The cricket. Male crickets make a musical noise by rubbing their wings together. The mosquito. Mosquitoes make a loud buzzing sound. Look out when you hear it. Mosquitoes bite people and animals and suck their blood. All right, and here is our glossary. So the bolded words we saw throughout the text are listed here in our glossary along with their definition. And then finally, we have our index, which shows us where we can look up certain words or phrases throughout the book.